one word. But this show has a number of words, but the first word is the same as the word on the one word on the other. <laughs> and you get your gun. I thought somebody would have it. Ethel Merman would say. Now, show business in the worst of times was a way for people to be able to get away from all the stresses, all of the problems of the day by going to musical theater, to burlesque, plays, opera, whatever. And in the good times, they flourished, and in the bad times, they made. And some of the actors and actresses had difficult times and difficult lives, but that was something that was constant along with all of the change. Now, in a nutshell, your chapter says there are several different types of contributed income. And they start with government. Okay? If you can get low, that would be the lowest. You start with government, but that's not where you will get the most money that you need to function as a development person. Government basically is set up to function, okay, as a conduit. Yet the conduit tends to move in the direction of policies. And they never really are with arts a lot. So art funding, musical theater funding, all of those types of funding, when you look at the way government don't expect to make a living there. Now, second one, corporation. Why does somebody go in business? Make money. She said. Make money. To make money. She said. <laughs> when they do that, their intent is to make money for themselves and then eventually for a shareholder for people who buy shares in their company. That's the way our system, free market capitalism works. That's good, makes sense. So the more money I can raise for myself, the better everybody is for me. And the people who work for me have my shareholder. For me, people who work for me have my shareholder. You say public out there? No, you buy the product. That's your satisfaction, buying the product. So if you come to me, and say, hey, Bob, you got this great big company, and we realize you're making lots of money. How about giving us a couple hundred thousand dollars for a show we want to do? My first question is, why? What is in it for me? Do I sell more widgets? No. Uh, what, I got my name in a program? Yeah, so what? So 500 people see it, big deal. You know, and so trying to weasel money out of me is very difficult for a corporation. They do support, and there are ones that do, but that's not your first, okay, area when you're trying to go after funds for your organization. So government and corporations, I will put low on the list. Now, foundations. Because I was so successful with this company, now I got somebody else running. I need something to do. Remember, I'm a rich man. Yada, da, 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 da. So yada, da, da becomes the yada, da, 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 da foundation. And I made all the money, and I got yada, da, da foundation. But now, I'm sitting there, and I say, well, gee, I like animals. I like musical theater. Man, not too hot on health organizations. They get enough money. And I'm not too good with social service agencies. So I think we'll just keep those two. Animals, musical theater, children. Now, if you know that, then I'm a good prospect, right? If you're trying to sell me something on animals, or you're trying to sell me something in a musical theater. But don't come to me if you're trying to uh, find a cure for heart disease, as good as that may be. 
and as worthy as it is, I don't have an interest. That's just my political bias, my personal <coughs> bias, my psychological bias. Okay, makes sense. Now, it gets back to what does all of that mean? It means that primarily, if you are ever going to be in the field, nonprofit or profit, and you're going to be trying to get money, you are going to have to deal one on one with individuals. We lost a little old lady. The little old lady just took off. So, I Joyce, you're going to have to be the little old lady. I'm going to be the little old lady. Okay. Now, individuals make up the largest group in terms of money that is available to be given to groups, organizations, causes, whatever. Not just little old lady little old men, people who have gone through the stages in their life. When you're born, it's me, 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 me. Mom has to feed you, mom has to do this, dad does this, this. Then when you're a little bit bigger, it's I want, I want, I want. And then as you get into your teenage years and beyond, it's I need to do these kinds of things. I need to do this. And then finally, the real world, the door opens up and you're in the real world, and you begin to say, okay, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Okay, I'm going to get married. Okay, good. I'm going to have a relationship. Great. I'm going to have this job. Terrific. Everything. But then you have to survive. Park, car, shirts, food, energy, whatever. You got all those expenses that you have to be worried about. So then it becomes us or our, and then as children are born, parents begin to think, okay, I've got to provide for them to be able to go to school because I want them to be better off than I do. I want them to get a better education than I do. I want them to go further than I do. Okay, so that means money, so they got to start sacking money away. Roth IRAs, college funds, all that kind of stuff. So then it's, what am I going to do for the kids? All of a sudden, they're up, they're out. They graduated, they're on their own, and they're in that other phase, and now you're sitting there, and you still got a pile left, and you're saying, okay, what are we gonna do for retirement? Well, we gotta start investing and doing that. That generally happens about 45 to 55. And then, after 55 or 60, when everybody in family units kind of has an idea of what their money situation is gonna be, how they're gonna live in retirement, and what, this is a big word, discretionary income they're gonna have. That discretionary income is extremely important because that's where you have the opportunity and the ability to get money. Now, Joycey is a little old lady. She lives up on a hill in a house and she has a ton of dough. I know this because I've done my research. In fact, before I even go ask her, I've probably spent anywhere from six months to a year researching her. Find out does she give to any other causes? Uh, what bank does she do her banking? Who are the people she hangs around with if she does? Now, I dissect all of this information. And some, I find out a piece of information <coughs> that she likes cats. Because I know that she buys cat food and kitty litter and all that stuff at this pet shop. So I start asking some questions and I find out, well, she buys this much food. Well, you don't buy that much food for one cat, so she must have multiple. Now, I come up with a strategy. We, our group here, we're going to put on a musical cat. So we need a benefit. So I'm going to go see Joyce, and I am going to get her to give us the $100,000 we need to get all of the scenery and everything that we need for cats. 